Hello, my name is Joel Christ. I'm a developer with Econo Systems, and today I'm going to do a walk through the process of designing InfoPath forms for workflows in SharePoint Server 2007. The workflow we're going to create today is going to make use of two InfoPath forms. We have an initiation form that will be displayed to the user when the workflow is activated, and we have a task edit form which will be displayed to the user when they choose to edit a task that was assigned to them as part of the workflow. I've gone ahead and done some work on these forms here. If we take a look at the definition of the user interface, we can see I've got a text box here called assignee, another one called instructions, another one called comments. I've also got a submit button with a couple of rules associated with it. First rule is a submit using the submit data connection. We've also got a rule to close the form with no prompt. If we go take a look at the submit data connection, we can see it's a submit to host. Um, what that's going to allow us to do basically is when we click on the submit button, submit our form data here from these three fields to the host environment here so that then our form data will be available to us from within our workflow. I've also come in here and set the form options security level here to be domain. Okay, now let's go ahead and save our form. Now we can go ahead and choose to publish our form. We're going to choose to publish to a network location. Say next. The network location I'm specifying is a folder called IP Forms underneath this folder here, IP Form Workflow, which is going to be the folder that contains my Visual Studio workflow project. So I'll go ahead and say next. I'm going to leave the alternate location blank and say publish. Okay. Now the next thing you'll notice also is I've changed the form field collection name here to be init form. This is so that when I run the XSD tool against the schema for this form to generate a class file that we can then pull into our workflow project in Visual Studio, I'm going to get a class named init form. Um, and this is useful for, especially if you have multiple schemas or multiple forms that you want to pull into your project, if you use the default name of my fields, um, you're going to end up with classes that have the same name. So by giving it a unique name, we're going to get a class with a unique name. So the first thing I need to do, though, before I can run the XSD tool against this schema for this form to generate a class file is to save it as source files. I've got a location here under the folder where the form is located called init form source. I'm going to say OK. All right, so that's saved out now a myschema.xsd file that we can now run the XSD tool against to generate the class file. Um, before I do that, though, I need to shut the form down on InfoPath. Otherwise, XSD complains that it can't access the file because it's locked. So now if I switch over to Visual Studio 2005 command prompt, I've got an XSD command here running against the XSD file for the form. Slash C switch tells XSD to create a class file. And the slash L switch tells it to use, in this case here, the C sharp language. Okay, so that generated a myschema.cs file. We're going to rename that file to initform.cs. And then ultimately, we'll be able to import this initform.cs into our Visual Studio workflow project. Okay, now the form we're looking at now is the task edit form. You can see that it has um, a couple of controls on it. It has a text box here called comments. Um, and we have a checkbox um, called is finished that will allow the user, the user to specify whether or not the task is complete. And we have an OK button, which has the same two rules that we just looked at. It has a submit to host. Um, rule associated with it as well as a, a rule to close the form with no prompt. Um, we've gone ahead and bound this comments text box um, to the comments property of the, the task. And the way we've done that is I've come in here and created a secondary data source called item metadata, which is an XML file that I added as a secondary data source. And if we take a look at the XML file, um, we can see it's very simple. It has a single field in it called OWS underscore comments. So what I've been able to do then after I added that as a secondary data source is come in here and on the properties for the text box, specify that the value of that text box is the OWS underscore comments field. So what that's going to allow us to do is bind this text box so when the form is initially displayed to the user um, when they choose to edit the properties for that task, that workflow task, this comments field, field will be pre-populated with the value of the comments that were specified when the initiation form was displayed. So at this point here, we're ready to go ahead and we'll save the form and then we'll do a publish. Again, we're going to publish to a network location. 
same folder that we did to previously under the Visual Studio project folder called IP Forms. I'm going to call this one taskform.xsn and say next. Leave the alternate name and location blank, hit next, and then do publish. Okay. Okay, now we're going to switch gears and we're going to go over and use Visual Studio now. Um, I'm going to connect to the server via remote desktop connection here. And we're going to come in here and I'm running Visual Studio 2005 on my server that's running my SharePoint server. Um, and Visual Studio has the extensions for the .NET Framework 3.0 installed uh, to get us support for generating or creating um, a SharePoint sequential workflow. Now I've gone ahead and done that. I've created a SharePoint sequential workflow called InfoPath Form Workflow Library. And I've done some work in that. So now we're going to do a walkthrough, kind of take a look at what the code is doing for the workflow. If we come over here in the Solution Explorer, we can see I've gone ahead and added my InfoPath forms, the init form, and the task form to the project. And I've also brought in the init form.cs file that was generated by the XSD tool that contains the implementation of our init form class that we're going to be able to use to get access to um, the data from our initiation form. So if we take a look now at the workflow outline, we can see we have our default Visual Studio generated activity here for the activation of the workflow. First thing the workflow does after being activated is it creates a task. Um, and then it goes into a loop, a while loop, um, waiting, uh, waiting on the task changed here. Every time the task is changed, the while activity is going to evaluate to determine whether or not it should continue or not. Once it determines that the task has been completed, um, it's going to come down here and do a complete task um, activity here to actually mark the task as completed. So if we take a look at the code um, for the workflow, we can see what we've got going on. We've got um, our workflow class here derived from the sequential workflow activity class. We declare ourselves some variables here to represent the values um, of the fields on our initiation form for the assignee, the instructions, and the comments. We also have a Boolean variable called is finished that's going to represent whether or not the user selected the um, is finished checkbox on the task edit form. Um, and then we come down here and we have some variables we declared here, a task ID that we're going to generate a value for um, when we create the task for the um, workflow. Um, and then we also have um, an instance of a SP workflow task properties object here that we're going to use to get access to the properties of the task that we're going to create. And then down here in the on workflow activated, this method gets called when the workflow is activated. Uh, first thing we do is we go ahead and get a hold of the workflow ID from the workflow properties instance here. Um, and then we go ahead and get access to the values of the assignee instructions and comments fields on our initiation form. And the way we do that is we create an instance of our init form here. Um, and the init form class, again, was the class that was created for us by the XSD tool based on the schema for our initiation form. And the way we do that is we get an XML serializer, an XML text reader, and then using the workflow properties initiation data property that was passed into us, we deserialize that data into an instance of our init form here. And then we're able to access the values from our form using the properties with the same names as our fields on our form here, assignee, instructions, and comments. And we stuff those off into our variables here and hold on to them for later use. And we use them right down here. And what we do, the create task one method invoking method, this method gets called um, just prior to the task being created by the create task activity. Um, we go ahead and generate a GUID here for our task ID to uniquely identify the task. Um, and then we set some properties on the task. We set the default title and description properties here to some strings. And then we stuff our variables that we have now holding the values that were specified by the user on the initiation form, the assignee comments and instructions, into the extended properties on the task items. So we're going to have an assignee comments and instructions field, or columns rather, on our task. And we're going to assign these values to those. So it'll show up that way in the task list. Let's switch back over here so we can take a look at the while activity to see what it's doing. Um, what we've got going on is the while activity condition that we've chosen as a code condition, and the method we're specifying is the not finished method. So if we come back over here and look, we can see what's going on with the not finished um, method. It basically sets the result property of the conditional event args that gets passed into the method equal to the opposite of the is finished Boolean. The is finished Boolean gets set down here in the on task changed handler. This method is going to get called every time um, the task is changed. Um, and 
what we do is we come in here and we check to see whether or not the user checked the um, the is finished checkbox on there. If they did, then we set is finished to true, else we set it to false. And then we come up here and do the appropriate thing to set the result property based upon whether or not the user specified that the task is finished. Once this uh, gets set to false, the not finished method is going to return false, and then the while condition here, the while activity rather, will fall through and do a complete task and go ahead and mark the task as completed. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the deployment related files for our workflow. The first one we're going to look at is a feature.xml file. Um, we give our feature ID here, value of a unique GUID, a title, a description. Um, a key thing to take a look at down here is our register forms property um, with a value of forms backslash start at XSN. This tells form server running under SharePoint where to locate our InfoPath forms for our workflow. So we're specifying that they're going to be located in the forms folder under our feature folder. Um, if we take a look at the workflow.xml file. Again, we give a name, description, and an ID for the workflow. Specify the assembly information for the assembly that implements our workflow. And then we have instantiation URL, modification URL to specify these ASPX pages that know how to display InfoPath forms. And then down here, we specify the IDs of our two forms using the instantiation form URN and task zero form URN for our instantiation and task edit forms. And I got these values here, these IDs off of the, by going in an info path, looking at the form properties of our um, info path forms that we were, the instantiation and task edit forms that we authored. Um, and so these basically identify our two forms here. And the last file we're going to take a look at is the install bat file. That bat file that gets created again for you by Visual Studio. I've modified this file a little bit so that it knows how to create the uh, folder necessary to hold our InfoPath forms and also copy our InfoPath forms. So we do that. We create the feature folder here and um, and the forms folder under the feature folder. Then we copy the feature.xml workflow.xml and do an X copy of our um, InfoPath forms. We go ahead and register our workflow assembly in the global assembly cache. Um, and then we do an install and, a, and an activate of our feature for our workflow. And we also do a deactivate and uninstall up here previous so that we can support doing multiple builds and debug and, and, and rebuilds within Visual Studio here, Studio here and make sure we always are running the latest um, version of the feature, the workflow feature. And then the last thing we do is we do an IIS reset to reset an information server so that it can pick up our changes. Okay, so I've gone ahead and built and deployed my workflow to my SharePoint site. And I'm going to switch over to that. And I've got a document library on my SharePoint site that I've associated that workflow with. So if I come in here and on one of the items, go to workflows, and then run my IP form test, which is what I named the workflow here. I can go ahead and fill in, and so I, on the initiation form here that gets displayed, fill in these values for the assignee and some instructions and some comments. OK, so as you can see, it's displaying our initiation info path form. So click on Submit. goes ahead and activates the workflow. We now show that we have our IP form test workflow in progress. If we come over here to the workflow tasks folder, or list rather, which is the task list that I associated with the workflow, I see that I now have a task entered in here. And it shows my instructions, comments, and the signing description um, that um, I specified in the initiation form. So now I can come in here, and I can choose to edit this. And I should get my task edit form displayed. And I do, and it displays the current value of the comments. And I can update this. If I could type. I'm not going to mark it as completed, though. I'm going to go ahead and just say OK. All right, and it says our new comment here now. If we come over to Project Status Reports, it still shows it in progress. Go back over to Workflow Tasks. Now, if we edit the task again, come in here and say this has been handled now we can mark it as complete so the while loop on our workflow exits out we mark the task as complete 
come over here now and it should show that the workflow is complete as well. And it does. So it looks like that's working just fine. Okay, so we were able to use Microsoft InfoPath to create an initiation and task edit form for our workflow that we were then able to incorporate into our Visual Studio created sequential workflow library and then successfully deploy our workflow to our SharePoint site and associate it with our Project Stats Reports document library.